today we'll recap the story of the 2014 movie, Big Hero 6. In the city of San Francisco, in an underground arena, a fighting competition between robots takes place. During the contest, the robot controlled by the pink-haired girl apparently manages to defeat its opponent. However, suddenly, Yama's robot gets up and uses a chainsaw, attached to his arm, to rip the opponent's head off. After the victory, the man asks who will be the next to challenge him and Hiro Hamada, a 14-year-old boy, enters the challenge to duel against that guy. His robot is much smaller than all the others participating in the contest and was built by himself. After the betting, the fight begins, and within seconds, Hiro's robot is completely destroyed. The boy asks for a second chance, claiming that this is his first fight. Yama does not intend to duel him again, but decides to accept the request when Hiro pulls a large amount of money out of his pocket. At the start of the second round, all parts of the Mega Bot unite again by magnetism and its facial expression transforms. During the fight, the robot splits into several parts to attack the enemy. After ripping off his opponent's arms, Mega Bot rips off his head and ends the fight. Hiro then takes the victory money, but Yama feels cheated and steals his robot. Then he orders his men to teach the boy a lesson. However, before Hiro gets hurt, his older brother shows up on a motorcycle and takes the boy out of that place. In that instant, the boy activates the Mega Bot and the robot manages to free itself from Yama. As they flee, Tadashi complains about his brother taking part in underground fights again. Hiro graduated from school at age 13, but has no intention of going to college, as he believes he won't learn anything he doesn't already know. As Tadashi tries to find a way out, the police show up and they are both arrested. As his parents had died when Hiro was three years old, his aunt Cass goes to the police station to pick them up. When they finally get home, they go straight to their room and Hiro receives notification that a new robot fight is about to begin. The boy intends to participate in the competition, but his brother tries to stop him. Realizing that he will not be able to dissuade the boy, Tadashi offers to take him, but instead of going to the underground fight, the boy takes his brother to meet the university where he studies. When he enters the laboratory, the boy is dazzled by all that technology and discovers that he can learn a lot of new things in that place. Hiro meets his brother's classmates and is excited to realize that he's not the only genius there. Each of them is working on an invention and they show their work to the boy. Now it's Tadashi's turn to present his new project. The young man takes a tape, glues it to Hiro's arm and pulls it, causing a slight graze on his arm. When the boy screams in pain, Tadashi's robot is activated. Baymax walks up to Hiro and introduces himself as a personal health agent, who has been programmed to respond when someone makes a pain sound. After scanning the boy, Baymax identifies the lesion and uses an antibacterial spray to prevent possible infection. Hiro is impressed and Tadashi tells him that he has programmed his robot to be able to perform over 10,000 medical procedures. All of its programming is stored on a small chip, which is attached to the robot's chest. As the boy evaluates each piece that makes up the robot, Baymax gives him a lollipop, to reward him for his good behavior during the service. He then says that he will be deactivated the moment his patient says he is feeling better. Hiro then assures him that he is better and Baymax returns to his charger case. At that time, Professor Robert Callahan appears and the boy is thrilled to meet him in person, as he always thought that man was a brilliant scientist. After seeing the mega bot, Callahan offers the young man an opportunity to enroll at the university, but Tadashi claims that his brother is more interested in participating in robot fights. Minutes later, the brothers leave and Tadashi says that they need to run if Hiro wants to make it in time to participate in the competition. However, after witnessing all that experience in the laboratory, the young man decides to enter the university and Tadashi is willing to help him. He says that every year there is an event where students exhibit their inventions. If Hiro designs something capable of catching Callahan's attention, he will be guaranteed a spot in his lab. However, the boy spends all day trying to create something amazing, but no ideas come to his mind. Tadashi then helps his brother look at things from another angle and, after seeing the mega bot right in front of him, he has a genius idea. Over the next few weeks, Hiro works intensively in his makeshift laboratory in the garage until his project is finally ready. With the help of Tadashi and his friends, the boy takes his newest invention to the exhibition. When he takes the stage, he attaches a neurotransmitter to his head and takes a micro-robot that was kept in his pocket. 
By saying that this is his project, some viewers are dismayed, as they think that the robot is not capable of doing anything. However, when that thing connects with its friends, it is capable of forming any structure. All commands are sent by the neurotransmitter. If the device is out of his head, the robots are disabled. In addition to transforming into any structure, microbots have the ability to transport anything easily. Anything the user can imagine, those robots are capable of doing. At the end of the presentation, Hero's project is applauded by a crowd of people who were impressed with his invention. As the boy celebrates with his friends, Alistair Cray, a great entrepreneur in the field of technology, appears in, after closely observing one of those microbots, informs him that he wants to patent Hero's project. While they were talking, Professor Callahan appears and tells him that Cray only got to where he is because he ignored several norms of science. Therefore, handing the microbots over to him could be dangerous. Hearing this, Hero is grateful for the offer, but decides not to sell his robots. Before saying goodbye, Callahan hands Hero an admission letter and states that he looks forward to seeing him in his next class. Everyone leaves the event happy and Tadashi states that he is proud of his brother. During the conversation, a fire breaks out and the boy is informed that Professor Callahan is inside the building. Hiro tries to stop his brother from going in there, but Tadashi claims he needs to save his teacher. Seconds after entering the building, the place completely explodes, and they both die. Days later, the funeral takes place and Hiro can't even go talk to his friends. The boy goes into depression and prefers to stay hidden in his room. In the following weeks, he still lacks strength to carry out everyday tasks, not even eating the boy can. In a few weeks, classes at the university will begin, but Hiro has not yet registered. Tadashi's friends are worried about the boy and try to contact him, but Hiro ignores all of their calls. Traumatized, he decides to drop out of college and intends to return to the robot fighting ring. However, when the boy picks up the Megabot, one of the robot's parts falls on his foot and Hiro screams in pain. At that time, Baymax is activated and scans the boy. The robot notices that Hiro is unharmed, but his hormone and neural levels indicate mood swings. While trying to disable Baymax, Hiro falls to the floor and finds, thrown under the bed, the coat he used in the presentation of his project. Inside was one of his microbots, which he believed were destroyed during the fire. Seeing that his micro-robot was being drawn somewhere, Hiro puts him inside a petri dish to guide him in the right direction. In order to stabilize the boy's mood swings, Baymax decides to find out where that microbot is going. When Hiro notices the robot's absence, it's too late. Baymax is already on the streets, running the risk of causing traffic accidents. When the boy finally manages to reach him, the robot had already discovered the place where the microbot was trying to get to. The pair stop in front of an abandoned garage, but the door is locked. Curious to know what was inside, Hiro decides to invade the place, entering through the window. To keep up with him, Baymax needs to empty his body. While inflating again, the boy will take a look at the place. At that moment, he finds some machines working on manufacturing new microbots. When Baymax appears, all the microbots start moving and Hiro pulls his friend to flee together from that place. As the door is locked, they need to hide. As they approach the window, Hiro sees a masked man walking towards him, but both manage to escape with their lives. The boy immediately goes to the police station, and while Baymax covers his holes with duct tape, Hiro tries to convince the officer that he is telling the truth. However, when he realizes that the man will not believe what he is saying, the boy decides to go home as Baymax is running out of battery. While recharging, the robot asks about Tadashi, and Hiro tells him he died. Hearing this, Baymax accesses the computer and downloads all data about personal losses. Now the robot knows how to help Hiro deal with grief. The first step towards treatment is being close to friends and relatives. So, Baymax gets in touch with the boy's friends. Hiro has always believed that the fire that killed his brother happened by accident, but after seeing the masked guy, the boy begins to suspect that he set the fire to steal his microbots. That night, while Cass is watching TV, Hiro and Baymax sneak out to the garage. The boy makes some upgrades to the robot so that he is able to fight evil and even manufactures an armor for him. Baymax is finally ready to fight and they go after the villain, but on the way they are chased by a suspicious vehicle. Upon entering the abandoned garage, they realize that the microbots are no longer there. 
To find them, they need to follow the microbot that Hiro carries in hands. When they arrive at the edge of the lake, the boy spots something strange approaching and the duo hides. The car that was following them appears and Tadashi's friends were there. They are worried about Hiro and try to take the boy home. However, before they could get into the vehicle, the masked man appears and throws a gigantic container at them. Baymax manages to grab the object and is soon thrown onto the car. As Wasabi drives out of that place, Hiro tries to explain what's going on. The group drives through the city and Baymax takes the opportunity to scan the enemy. The masked man approaches the vehicle and Gogo decides to get behind the wheel. The chase continues and the car is captured by the microbots. However, Gogo manages to get rid of them and the vehicle ends up falling into the water. Lucky for them, Baymax is the most capable health agent there is and manages to save them from drowning. After leaving the lake, they walk to Fred's house and his friends are in disbelief to discover that the boy lives in a mansion. The surprises continue as the friends enter Fred's room. The place is completely bizarre, decorated with dolls and fictional creatures. As Hiro thinks of a new plan to catch the villain, Baymax notices his body temperature is low and starts to warm him up. The other friends approach to warm up too and the boy asks if they know the symbol that was drawn on some of the items the masked guy was carrying. So Fred tells him he has a theory. He believes that the villain who attacked them is none other than Alistair Cray. The businessman wanted to buy the microbots from Hiro, but the boy refused the proposal. Therefore, Fred believes that Cry caused the fire to steal the robots without arousing suspicion. But Hiro doesn't fully believe this theory and claims they need more data to find the suspect. At that moment, Baymax says that he scanned the masked man and knows all the data related to his health status. Hearing this, Hiro comes up with a new plan that consists of scanning the entire city at the same time so that Baymax can locate the masked man. For this strategy to work, the boy will need to improve the robot sensor. All the friends agree to help him in this mission and Fred is excited about the idea of becoming a superhero. As they work on their suits, Hiro surmises that the villain's neurotransmitter is in his mask. If his theory is right, just take off that guy's mask and he'll lose all control of the microbots. Before putting the plan into action, they use the mansion space to train with their new inventions and use Fred's butler as a guinea pig for their experiments. A few days later, Hiro introduces his friends to the new Baymax, updated to version 2.0. With that armor, the robot can launch rocket punches and even has wings. On his back, there is a magnet, where the boy must attach himself to fly along with Baymax. However, the first flight experience is not very pleasant and Hiro is desperate. They almost have several accidents and the boy only calms down when the robot lands on the Golden Gate. Seconds later, Baymax launches himself hundreds of meters into the air and soars over the ocean. Then the robot takes Hiro to the city. They are under the clouds watching the sunset when the boy asks Baymax to scan everyone in town in order to locate the villain. The robot finds the masked man and signals that he is on an island near the city. After picking up their friends, they fly there. The friends are scared, because that would be the first official fight they would have. Upon hearing the slightest noise, they activate their powers, but soon discover that they were attacking a pigeon. As they enter the facility, the team walks through the hallways, until Honey finds something suspicious. They enter a partially destroyed room and look for the control panel. When Hiro turns on the screen, a recording appears, in which Cray presents his new project to his investors which consists of a portal that allows the instantaneous transport of any person or object through space. Abigail is the first person to be teleported by that machine and prepares her capsule to make the journey. Seconds after launch, the team loses contact with the pilot and the portal begins to self-destruct. Cray then interrupts the electromagnetic field and Abigail is trapped inside. After watching the video, Hiro and his friends are convinced that Cray is the guy in the mask and intends to use the microbots to rebuild the teleportation portal. At that moment, the villain appears and throws a giant rock at the young friends. Baymax manages to hold it back and uses his rocket fist to free them. The group band together to get the mask with the neurotransmitter, but the man gets rid of them all. Fred is the first to be defeated and Gogo tries to get his attention. As the girl prepares to attack, Honey launches one of her jelly balls at the enemy, but ends up missing her target. At that time, Wasabi appears and needs to use his laser sword to defend himself from the microbot's attack. After all his friends are defeated, 
Hiro and Baymax appear flying and the boy manages to rip the mask off the guy who killed his brother. It is at this moment that the young boy discovers that the villain, in fact, is Professor Callahan. During the fire at the exhibition, the man used the microbots to protect himself, meaning Tadashi died for nothing. Upon discovering that the man saved himself and allowed his brother to die in the fire, Hiro orders Baymax to destroy him. However, the robot's programming prevents it from harming any human. So, the boy takes out his original chip, programmed by Tadashi, and inserts another card, with a programming that allows him to attack anyone who gets in his way. While the other ones try to stop Baymax from eliminating a person, Callahan manages to retrieve his mask and escapes with the microbots. In the midst of that chaos, Honey manages to insert Baymax's original chip and the robot returns to normal. Furious, Hero goes after the professor and tries, again, to change the robot's chips. However, Baymax manages to stop him and claims that his purpose is to heal the sick and injured, not hurt people. He then shows a recording made by Tadashi. The boy recorded every attempt to make Baymax work. After 84 tests, he was finally able to get the robot to work properly and was extremely happy to know that Baymax will be used to help many people. Seeing this video, Hiro gets emotional and asks the robot for forgiveness for what he had done. At that moment, his friends show up and deliver a flash drive containing a new recording they found on the island. In the video, Callahan arrives just as Abigail is trapped inside the portal and the group discovers that the woman was the professor's daughter. Now, Callahan seeks revenge on Cray. As the man introduces his company's new campus, the masked man appears and captures him. Callahan claims that his daughter died because of Cray's arrogance. As the businessman knew that the portal was not yet complete and still allowed Abigail to enter it. In revenge, the professor uses the microbots to rebuild the teleportation machine and eliminate everything most precious Cray has. Before the place is destroyed, Hiro and his team show up and try to convince Callahan to give up his revenge, but the man instead attacks his students and takes down Baymax. Hiro is thrown away and ends up being sucked into the portal. His friends try to save him, but they end up being captured by the microbots. Seeing his partners in danger, the boy asks his friends to destroy the robots, as they would be sucked into the portal and could no longer follow Callahan's orders. When he realizes that Hiro is in danger, Baymax manages to break free and go to save him. Now, with the entire group together, the boy asks his friends to focus their efforts on destroying the robots while he distracts Callahan. By the time the man realizes it, he is down to less than half of his microbots and Baymax manages to retrieve the mask. By removing the neurotransmitter from his head, the portal starts to collapse and begins to suck everything around it. Cray states that there is no way to turn it off, and in a few minutes, the portal will self-destruct. The only solution is for everyone to move away from that location, but Baymax detects a sign of life inside the machine and decides to go there to help. After all, that's what it was built for. His sensor indicates that there is a woman inside and she is in a state of hibernation. Immediately, Hiro realizes that this is Callahan's daughter and decides to accompany Baymax on a mission to save her. When they cross the portal, they are faced with a completely different universe. As they try to reach the capsule, they must dodge the thousands of Cray Tech debris. After finding the capsule, they prepare to leave. However, on the way back, as they are about to go through the portal, a giant debris appears and Baymax jumps in front of Hero to protect him. At that instant, his armor is destroyed and his thrusters stop working. The robot can't get out of that place anymore, but it's still determined to save Hero and Abigail. The boy despairs and tries to think of another solution to save his friend, however. There is no time for that, as the portal will soon be destroyed. So Baymax asks if the young man is feeling better and when Hero says yes, the robot is deactivated. But first, he uses his rocket arm to send the capsule out of the portal before it explodes. Minutes later, the ambulance appears. Abigail is taken to the hospital and Callahan is arrested. Weeks later, Hiro starts attending university with his friends, and one day, when he takes Baymax's arm out of a cardboard box and places it as an item in his lab, the boy finds the robot's chip. The object was tucked inside his fist and contained all of Baymax's stored programming. Hero just needs to create a new robotic body and insert the chip. In this way, the boy manages to bring his friend back with all his memories. Along with their team of young nerds, they continue to act as superheroes and take care of the residents of the city of San Francisco.